Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different as far as the way I'm recording this video. So if you guys could leave me some feedback in the comments below, if it looks different, if you like it, if you don't like it. Um, what I'm doing is significantly easier for me and it would make it easier for me to make content in a, in a faster pace. But I also still want to make sure that the quality looks good and that it still seems like a normal video for me. So again, feedback can be very useful and please leave me some down below. It's been quite a while since I've done a comparison video, and that's because honestly, I was stuck on coming up with a topic. I actually have to give video credit for this video to CryptoZombie. He'd mentioned the idea in passing to me, and I thought, why haven't I thought of that? So here we are. Also, quick reminder, please don't forget to hit that like button or that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm grateful for the community support, and I put out new content pretty often, and I would hate for anybody to miss out. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by going over to my website or my Redbubble store and picking up one of these fancy t-shirts, or by heading over to my Patreon and signing up for that. Just a reminder, I'm not a financial advisor. All investments have inherent risk. Please always do your own research, and my videos are for entertainment purposes only. Today's video is going to be a comparison of two different technologies in the crypto space that we come in contact with on a daily basis. Blockchain technology began quietly disrupting the status quo in 2008 when Satoshi Nakamoto, a pseudonym that the creator used to identify themselves, released the original white paper for Bitcoin. Since that time, there's been many iterations of blockchain technology and the cryptocurrency community has strived to design a one size fits all solution for blockchain shortcomings. Enter the DAG or Directed Acyclic Graph Technology. This is an alternative to the blockchain that goes about reaching consensus in a very different way than its competitor. Is it Bitcoin or blockchain or both? First, I'd like to clear one thing up. The words Bitcoin and blockchain are often used interchangeably, causing newcomers in the space to believe that they're one and the same. This is a misconception. It's important to clarify before continuing on that Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency that uses blockchain as its underlying technology. Bitcoin isn't blockchain and vice versa. In simple terms, blockchain tech allows digital information to be distributed, but not copied. That means each individual piece of data can only have one owner. The blockchain, what is it? The blockchain is a public ledger that is transparent, immutable, meaning it can't be changed, and linked together by blocks. Blocks are the components of this technology that retain the transaction data, which is then permanently recorded. They can be thought of as like individual pages of a city record book. The book being the blockchain or the public ledger, while each page being a block that contains specific data. Each block contains, among other things, a record of some or all recent transactions and a reference to the block that came immediately before it. It also contains an answer to a difficult to solve mathematical puzzle, the answer which is unique to each block. New blocks cannot be submitted to the network without the correct answer. The process of mining is essentially the process of competing to be the next to find the answer that solves that current block. Once that block is created and the new transaction is verified and included in that block, those new blocks are then organized into a linear sequence over time, which is where the name blockchain comes from. Approximately every 10 minutes thereafter, a new block is created and the transaction is reconfirmed by the Bitcoin network. As the confirmations increase, the likelihood of a double spend attack decreases. Right, so where is this chain then? Due to the open nature of cryptocurrencies and the importance of the public having access to all transactions on the network, the blockchain isn't located on just one individual's computer. The blockchain is actually managed and authenticated by distributed nodes, meaning thousands of separate computers all over the world. All of these nodes have a copy of the entire blockchain, aka the history of all transactions that have ever occurred in the past. When someone new decides to run a node on the blockchain, they must first download the entire transaction history. Think of it as like reviewing your past bank statements, but going back years. By distributing copies and access, the chain simply can't go down or disappear. It's a decentralized system that is both sturdy and secure. The pros of blockchain tech. From a currency standpoint, blockchain tech makes it possible to send and receive money anywhere in the world at any given time. Users don't have to worry about crossing borders, rescheduling for bank holidays, or any other limitations that one might think of when transferring money. Due to the fact that transactions cannot be reversed, do not carry with them personal information, and are secure, merchants are protected from potential losses that might occur from fraud. It enables a database of information to be shared in a distributed way without a center administrator and no central point of failure, making it secure and reliable. It is transparent and immutable, meaning the public ledger is viewable to anyone showing all the transactions and transactions cannot be altered or deleted. Cons of the blockchain. Delayed transactions. The major problem associated with blockchain tech right now is that the transaction speeds and its ability to scale for real world use. The nature of the distributed database is that it must work towards all of its nodes reaching consensus. And depending on how the consensus mechanism is used or how it goes about doing this, it may involve a significant back and forth communication that can be very slow. It utilizes a lot of energy as well. As of September 8th, 2018, the country closest to Bitcoin in terms of energy consumption was Austria. 
The same website said that the Bitcoin blockchain could power 6 million US households. When Bitcoin first came on the scene, it was used for some illicit activity. And unfortunately, because when most people hear the word blockchain, they immediately think Bitcoin, it may be difficult to move away from Bitcoin's checkered past in association with this technology. The fact is, many people are still unaware of digital currencies, so educating the masses is going to be a very important hurdle. And finally, the uncertainty of the technology in general is always a concern. If we're looking at blockchain as a competitor to modern currencies, we will see major differences in the fact that fiat has always been created and regulated by governments. Blockchain as a replacement for that faces hurdles for adoption from pre-existing financial institutions, government regulation, and overall skepticism of the general public for its lack of governmental regulation. On to the directed acyclic graph technology, also known as DAG. While a blockchain visually can be represented by, well, a chain, the DAG structure is more easily conceptualized by envisioning clicking a folder on the desktop of your computer and having it open up to reveal more subfolders and so on. Its sequence can go only in one direction, which makes it similar to blockchain transactions and that it's immutable and cannot be tampered with once it's been confirmed. DAG, what is it? DAG is a blockless distributed ledger, which is scalable and lightweight. There are a few projects that you've probably heard of that use DAG. Byteball, IOTA, Hashgraph, and Nano, which was formerly Ryblox. While their names would be the first distinguishing property, they also vary in how they've reached consensus. Byteball achieves consensus by relying on a main chain comprised of honest, reputable, and user-trusted witnesses to agree on the state of the network. While IOTA achieves consensus by using very small amounts of POW or proof of work on each transaction requiring the issue of the transaction to confirm two other transactions. Hashgraph uses a gossip about gossip algorithm, which means that each transaction has information from the previous transaction that is being shared and confirmed, and Nano achieves consensus by a balanced weighted vote on conflicting transactions. IOTA calls their DAG the Tangle, Nano refers to it as a block lattice, and Hashgraph has named it Hashgraph. Unlike the blockchain, individual DAG transactions are linked to one another directly rather than being grouped together and processed in blocks. This, in theory, makes DAG systems far more scalable than the average blockchain. The pros of DAG. Instantaneous transaction processing. Since transactions don't need to be grouped together in blocks, they can be confirmed instantaneously rather than remaining throttled by block requirements. There are no miners on DAG networks. The validation of transactions go directly to the users themselves. So for users, this means that transactions go through almost instantly. And because of that, most of these projects tow either being fee-less or maintaining very low fees. Like in Nano's example, because they're requiring a user who's sending a transaction to do a small amount of proof of work to confirm two other transactions, they don't require miners on the network because all of its users basically are miners. Microtransactions. Because the nature of the ecosystem is fast and cheap, sending micropayments becomes a plausible use case. Micropayment examples could be sending your friend $5 for a coffee or using a pay-as-you-go service model for parking or internet services, all possible because fees are less of a concern than in a traditional blockchain setting. The cons of DAG, complexity. The fundamentals behind the technology itself could be confusing, especially when each project is tailoring it to meet its own individual needs. Obviously, we see that in traditional blockchain tech too, but because DAG tech is new and less mainstream, this may prove to be a hurdle in adoption. It requires a much larger user base. Most of the perks of this technology can also be seen as a weakness if there aren't enough users. Let's use Nano as an example. If there's a decrease in network activity, meaning a decline in outgoing transactions, then it will subsequently cause a decrease in transaction confirmations, leading to a possible network standstill. And in IOTA's case, network traffic is tied to the security of the ecosystem, so decline would put IOTA at risk for a network attack, hence the reason why they have a coordinator, which is a centralized authorizer of transaction that helps to stabilize and secure the network. The coordinator was supposed to be removed once the network was capable of standing on its own, but it hasn't been yet. Do these two technologies have anything in common? Excellent question. As far as similarities go, there aren't many. Both the networks send, receive, and confirm transactions. They're also both immutable ledgers showing agreed upon information that's available publicly. However, their differences are pretty vast. DAG visually looks like a graph, whereas blockchain is more closely related to a list. There's no blocks in a DAG network, and there's no need to wait for scheduled confirmation times or be at the mercy of network miners like with blockchain projects. Final thoughts. It should be appreciated that as a community, crypto is working to come up with new iterations of current technology to try to solve our present limitations and promote widespread adoption. That being said, it seems neither blockchain nor DAG have really been able to hit a home run as to far as what we need. I think they both serve a purpose and they both have their strengths and weaknesses, but I don't foresee DAG tech replacing blockchain anytime soon. While the stance may elicit some negative feedback, it's simply my humble opinion. 
All right, guys. Well, this was a quick one, but I thought it was pretty informative, and it wraps it up for me today. So thank you all for watching as usual, and I will see you all soon. Hey, guys. Don't be sad this video's over. Do you know why? Because I have so much other content in these playlists over here. Go check them out if you'd like more comparison videos, and as usual, thank you guys for watching my channel.